Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Gordon and McPhail's Kalila 23-year-old Connoisseur's Choice. Dustin, is this Connoisseur's Choice? Yes, sir. All right, this one's 1996, comes in at 58.3% ABV. What can you tell us about it? Refilled Sherry Butts. This is uh, came out a couple years ago. Yeah, we got this in... Did you get this in Chicago? I didn't get it in Chicago, but I brought it to Chicago with uh, with us. Oh. So this was one of like, this was kind of our hotel room pour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kalila, one of my favorite distilleries. Pretty sure we had some of this with Mario as well, so... Yeah, oh, that's right. At the end of the night. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Now it's coming back. To <laughs> Long night. Long night drinking. Uh, but Kalila, usually um, a special whiskey. I've had plenty... We've had plenty of really good ones. This is an independent bottling from a well, well-known independent bottler. Um, I think I said before it's in 1996, and this is 200 and excuse me, 519 bottles, and this is bottle 20, 24. Not quite sure. The bottle number is not important. It isn't. In fact, we got some old whiskey, X Sherry cast maturation. And actually, look when this cast was actually. strength. So this was. That's a dark whiskey, there, Dustin. It really, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty good. I mean, again, this is refill, but still, nice color. Nice color. And let me tell you, Mike, right on the nose, just wow. Mm. That is a nice, <sighs> nice sherry note. It is, and it goes so, I mean, Cleo is such a malleable spirit, as I've said in almost yeah. every Cleo review I've ever done, so forgive me. But man, that is just lemon loaf meets sweet sherry cask. Right great there. note on the lemon loaf, by the way. Because I was sitting there going, all right, what is a good way to describe this? And that's dead on. You get that from Kalila. Slight hint of gasoline in here, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell 58.3, but there are hints there. There are some red flags, so this is going to be aggressive. Yeah, this almost has, like, next-day charcoal. Like, it's, it sat out all night. It's a cold yes. night, too. It's a cold night. Mm -hmm. You got a little bit of that charcoal still in the grill. Twinge of berry. Oh, n nice berry notes here. So, you know, more berry than like plum. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not like it, it, on the dark scale. This is more berries. Yes, very berry. So, Blackberry, so blueberry. You mm. know that kind of thing going mm. on here. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a heck of a nose. Now it's it, it's it's dense. It's waxy as well. When yeah. I said lemon loaf, that lemon loaf is a waxy, waxy loaf. Yeah. I'm always looking for things like you know. Your basic vanillas and your grains, and none of that's here. This is the sherry sweetness up front, and it is a really dirty Kalila, comparatively for Kalila, where it's a lot of soot, a lot of ash. Again, next day, coal notes. I mean, mm -hmm. very nice. Yeah, chimney, chimney sweep. Now, that said, the fruit forward nature, I think, really is what dominates the nose here. So, this is mostly just a really pleasant, fruity, sweet experience, but it's got a really nice, dirty undertone. That lemon's mixing with vanilla. It's lemon and berries, man. That's what it is. But it's not like a super sour lemon. It's again, it's like mm. a very nice, like it's a pastry kind of yep. thing. It's like a cake or something. Mmm, smoke. All dessert. Mm. <laughs> Love this smoke. Yeah, Kula has a. The smoke mm. is very easy to take normally. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't something that's very pungent like some Isla smokes are, but it can get dangerous on you. Just so many nice notes here. Very, very pleasant. Just inviting. I just want to keep smelling this whiskey. Yeah, I'm going in. Yeah, do it, man. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It, it's such a nice, pleasant, sweet... And yet, again, it doesn't have that traditional, like, it's overly sugary or it's heavy vanilla from bourbon casks. It's just a sherry-driven sweetness that I'm sure the malt has played a role in, but you've lost... Whatever the malt, where the malt starts and the sherry be, begins and ends, they, it's kind of been lost in 23 years of maturation here. Sweet, sweet berries, bubblegum sherry, sherry punch and old sherry. A little peppery on the mid palate. Spicy. And it just kind of settles in. Ooh. Settles in nice smoke, nice lemon, char. Yeah, fire gone out Ooh. cold. Cold ash, chimney sweep. <clears throat> and just that lovely sherry that was sherry sweetness that was there at the end, after you had everything in the mid palate and the initial finish with all the spices and all the hotter notes, here comes that nice sherry cast back in. Just gentle, caressing, sugary, mm. lightly milk chocolate. But I got to tell you, 
no, no real alcohol sting at all. The only sting there was was just a little bit of the spice. 58.3, very caressing on the palate. I definitely, on my tongue, can tell there's some high, high proof here. But when you swallow and you're drinking it, you don't get any kind of hug. I mean, this yeah. is effortless to drink. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, for me, the, the beauty of this whiskey is really not the tasting notes so much. As again, this is a beautiful experience. Up front, soft, silky, velvety, fruity. Transitioning back and starts some darker you know, flavors start coming through. A little bit of the oak, a little char. Pete's starting to really come in. And then the spices you were talking about, Mike, it just gets spicy. Your whole mouth just kind of like gets a little bite from the spice. Then it moves back. Now it's like wood and ash and char. Beautiful. And now your like, entire like mouth is just saturated with that peat. And then as it starts subsiding, as you said, some of the sweetness sneaks back in there. Lemon. Gorgeous whiskey. Yeah. So much of lemon right here in the front, in the front, in the front sides of the tongue when you initially swallow. I get that on a lot of Kalilas. That's like Kalila 30-esque type. Mm -hmm. It's like a little lemon sting to it. Now, the spices are a little turned up from compared to what that whiskey is, but the sherry notes, the darkness that this reaches. This is much punchier, much more aggressive, a little rougher around the edges than the Kalila 30. 30 sure. is a very refined whiskey. This is... Well, I wouldn't say this is unrefined. It's definitely got rougher edges. Comparatively, yes. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> but you know what? The, the long linger here is just... That lovely sherry, sherry. You, I, I want to call it like a light milk chocolate or sugary chocolate or something like that. But what it really is, it just feels like just wet sherry. You know what I mean? Just kind of lingering there in the background. Wet old sherry punching, just right there. Mm. Beautiful really good. nose. Did you put water in it? Yeah. Beautiful nose, beautiful palate. It's I mean, turned up this kind of like gasoline sherry note that I'm really digging right now. This was a solid, solid cask. Yeah. Casks, excuse me, used for this one. Just one cask. Oh, it was just, just one? single cask, yeah. Oh, I thought it was two. For, yeah. You know what? Why did I think so? Oh, the number. I should have. Nah, this is Sherry Bud, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't. I think you keep saying punch in, but this is a Sherry Bud. Uh, just I'm just talking about I understand. Yeah, for the, flavor. For the people watching, these, this was a Sherry Bud, which is why it's got a 500 plus bottle yield. And uh, I tell you what, I'd love to know what the first, uh, first use of that butt was because, man, I bet you that came off. Beautifully well as well because this is awesome. It's very easy. It seems like to do a Kalila well. This well, is probably true. A lot of independent bottlings do this distillery extremely well. Mm -hmm. mm. In fact, some of my favorites from the distillery are independent bottlings. Well, they don't really. I mean, the twenty five is great, but it's forty three percent. And it's affordable, which I guess, if you're going to be 43%, it'll at least be affordable. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, that's a beautiful whiskey. It smells great. I know, don't they have one between the uh, 12 and the uh, 25? They have an 18. They have an 18. I, I've never, I don't think well, I've ever seen a, one. Well, just, well, I mean, they're special releases usually, right? The unpeated and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm but I'm talking just like their regular core. I thought they had one in there. I never see, all I see is the 12, and then every now and then the 25 pops up on my radar. Yeah, pretty much. There's just not enough Khalil, and from what I understand, they make a lot of it, so. A lot of it. I mean, again, but again, there's tons of independent bottlings of it. Yeah, and it's used in blends, obviously. I mean, it's a, it's a malleable, this is why John Glazier uses it, he, it's malleable. Yeah, this is Kleinlish to me, whenever I see these in blends, or thinking, oh, I'll probably like this. <laughs> You're right. <clears throat> Um, water really didn't do anything for this, Mike. It's honestly, it's the same whiskey. Very similar, yes. Um, you're just kind of bringing the proof down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Beautiful nose. I love it. Mm hmm. Because what you expect on the palate, you know, it's kind of takes down some notes, ramps up some. Whew, got a little spicier, though. Really turned up the spice. Biting spice with water. I've kind of acclimated, I think, the spice and really just I'm appreciating all the sweetness. It's still there. Such a sweet, well done, without being over the top. <clears throat> like, it's sweet, but it's not like sugary, like coyingly sweet. It's not that unpleasant, you know, kids candy thing. It's it's sweet in a very like, oh, we flavored this with fruit. Well developed sweetness. Mm -hmm. Well developed sweetness. I don't know that I get the 23 years necessarily on here. It was hard that way, you know. 
I mean, even the 30 and the 35, I never thought ultra, ultra old whiskey. I thought very good whiskey. 35 came off pretty old to me. But but, uh, but nearly four decades? I don't know if it came off that old. You're right. Compared to, say, a Bellavini or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, They, they were snappy. Mm-hmm. You know, which is, mm. which is fine. I mean, again. Incredibly long, lingering finish here, too. Just beautiful. It does. It does. Mm. So where as far as a whiskey score on this one? I'm going to give this one a 90, Mike. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, like... Rock star, greatest whiskeys in the world type thing. But I think this particular bottle, and we should just disclose for the guys, it is cask number 16075. So if you see one of these out there, definitely a good whiskey. Yes. And I believe these were fairly inexpensive, right around that 200 mark. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I was even debating a 91, but I'm right there at a 90. It's a very, very good whiskey. You know, there's really nothing too off-putting. It's a little spicy for, for my taste, especially mm-hmm. a little bit of water, but the spice is, it is the right amount of spice. Um, I think I'm still really sensitive to it. But I tell you what, nothing off-putting about this whiskey. Extremely enjoyable. Good age statement. Very good cast maturation. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with it. Just not super, super epic, but a very, very good whiskey. And that's what Just a 90 beautiful, is. beautiful, beautiful whiskey. That's what a 90 is. Mm. All right, if you guys had a chance to try this one, let us know what you guys think. And Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Drink like Michael Jordan. 23 years old.